World Press Freedom Day will be commemorated in the Namibian capital in exactly two weeks' time. The celebration will be held under the theme, Information as a Public Good. Joining me in studio this morning with a reflection of media freedom in the land of the brave is the Secretary General of the Editors Forum of Namibia, Ronel Rademeyer. Good morning, Ronel, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Good morning, Denver, and good morning also to the Namibian nation. Ronel, it's an open secret that Namibia is preparing to host the 2021 World Press Freedom Day, which coincides, of course, with the 30th anniversary of the Vintage Declara Declaration. What exactly does this mean to you and to the country to host an event of this magnitude? Well, it's a, it's a wonderful moment in the history of uh, Namibian media. Denver, as you know, the Vintage Declaration is considered a benchmark for ensuring press freedom around the world. Uh, it all began, began at a seminar here in Ventuk in, uh, at the end of April 1991. Um, and the ideas exchanged by African journalists and uh, media practitioners at that seminar acted as a catalyst um, to encourage press freedom, independence and plural pluralism in Africa and around the world. As you know, Denver, that um, Gwen Lister played a, a pivotal role in, in that process in, at that seminar. And she, of course, is also the media's ambassador at this year's event. Uh, the meaning, well, um, the eyes of the international world will be on Namibia. Mm. Uh, and the world will be reminded of the important role that governments have in creating and enabling environment w uh, in which media can flourish within the firm parameters Denver of freedom, pluralism and independence. And furthermore, that state should be proactive in protecting journalists um, and advance, advancing the opportunities for citizens to exercise their freedom of mm. expression. Ultimately, it's not about media just surviving, but media to flourish and thrive, as you put it. What do you understand by media freedom? Well, media freedom... Um, is the freedom of various kinds of media uh, and, and sources of communication to operate in, in the political and civil society. The term media freedom obviously extends the traditional term uh, of freedom of the press to um, include electronic media such as radio, television and internet. And the term acknowledges that the media in modern societies consists of more than, than just the print media. Media freedom is necessary for democratic societies, as we all know. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals generally cannot get sufficient information on their own to make informed decisions um, on their daily activities. Um, and they rely on us as the media to, prov to provide that information. In addition, the media are an outlet for public discussion and opinion, which is very important, mm -hmm. and generally fulfill the functions of seeking the truth uh, educating the public and serving as a watchdog over government. Mm. But hand in hand with media freedom um, is media responsibility and, and accountability. Very important as mm. well. Renel, against the background of what constitutes media freedom that you just shared with us, which are the prevailing challenges relating to media freedom and what can be done to address those? Sure. Yes, Denver. Um, as you know, we are moving, moving towards an increasingly digital, mobile and social environment mm. in, uh, with more intense competition for attention. More and more people get uh, news via digital media. They increasingly access news via mobile devices such as, this, as their cell phones and they rely on social media and other intermediate mediatories in terms of how they access and find news. Uh, in this environment, as you know, a limited number of large technology companies, companies the, the Googles and the Facebooks of the day, enable billions of, of users across the world to navigate and use digital media in an easy and attractive way um, through services like search, uh, social networking, media, um, video sharing and, and messaging. And the consequence, Denver, is that these companies play a more and more important role, not only to distribute the, the news, 
but also to, to get the digital advertising income. Mm. And, um, you know, legacy media or traditional media like print media and broadcasters, um, be, by contrast, are becoming relatively less important as distributors of news. But we are still very important in, in um, creating news, you know, and uh, 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 producing uh, credible and good quality journalism and news. So the million dollar question is, how do we work uh, against this? Mm. And, and I think, um, you know, independent media, as you are very well aware of, um, have to invest in ways to create quality uh, journalism in the digital sphere. And we must find ways to monetize that news in, in the digital sphere, mm. sphere, but that is not that, that einfach, mm. as they say. It's certainly no walk in the park. Absolutely. Yeah. Renal, I would like us to move briefly to the work and operations of the Editors Forum of Namibia. Now, this body was formed in 2007 to, amongst others, defend and promote media freedom, pluralism, independence as well, very importantly, self-regulation. To what extent would you say the forum has lived up to its mandate, approximately 13 years down the line. Yes. Um, well, I, I think we really succeeded in doing that. In our quest to raise the standards of journalism in Namibia and in keeping with the African Union's principles on media self-regulation, uh, the Editors Forum, together with the Office of the Media uh, Ombudsman in 2017, published the revamped and consolidated code of ethics and conduct for journalists in this country, both print, broad, uh, broadcast and online media. And the code, uh, as you know, adheres to the Namibian constitution and it is based on the universal practice of good journalism. Uh, and it was crafted by, by Namibian editors by senior uh, journalists and also by key legal stakeholders. Very well. An element that you alluded to earlier, Renal, is that a free press is certainly fundamental to a democratic society and holds those in authority to account. What would you say is our role as media practitioners to aid in holding those in power, those in authority accountable? Denmark, we as journalists should probe endlessly to make public which, that which is corrupt and untruthful in the public and the private spheres. And we should do that in an ethic, uh, ethical and responsible way. We should also fight against the manipulation and the collapse of our integrity as journalists by powerful people. Mm. Um, there are those in intelligence and criminal networks that actively work to shape media narratives. You will remember what happened in South Africa during the later years of uh, President Jacob Zuma. Uh, you will remember the Sunday Times newspaper published a, s a series of wildly dishonest articles and they, um, they was manipulated into doing that, that and mm. then they la later had to, to withdraw that. Now, I think that is something that we should seriously uh, guard against, mm. that manipulation. As we slowly start wrapping up our conversation, Renal, moving over to this year's festivities and celebration. Now, the World Press Freedom Day theme for 2021 is information as a public good, which serves as a call to affirm the importance of cherishing information exactly as that, a public good. How do we ensure our audience, those who consume what it is that we produce, is sufficiently information literate in an era of incredible Fake news, misinformation, as well as disinformation. Um, once again, not an easy task. Uh, with a large amount of news currently being published online, the ability to evaluate the credibility of online news has indeed become essential. While there are many, many studies involving fake news and the tools how to detect that, um, very little work has been has been done to focus on the use of information literacy. And I think information literacy is very important to assist people to critically assess online information and news. Mm. Critical thinking as a form of information literacy uh, provides a means to critically 
engage with online content. Uh, for example, by looking for the evidence to support certain claims and by evaluating the plausibility of arguments that you come across in, in the digital sphere. Mm. Uh, along with that, uh, it's very important to promote critical thinking by enhancing media and information literacy um, among, among our reader and viewer uh, audiences, uh, but also to defend and demand um, the importance, uh, important role that uh, good quality journalism plays. Renal, as we approach the 29th of April to the 3rd of May, we'll still have a, a number of conversations around this topic and also to, to gauge at some stage how prepared we are as a country and as, as a capital. This morning we've unfortunately run out of time. What are your brief final remarks, please? Well, um, it is a very important, it's a milestone event for Namibia. Um, as I've said, the eyes of the world will be on Namibia. I think it will also um, give a good opportunity for journalists to once again reflect on their role in society, on their role of keeping people informed of their role to enhance the public good. Renal, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you, Denver. Do you have it, Renal Rademeyer? She's the Secretary General of the Editors Forum of Namibia, talking to us about the World Press Freedom Day celebrations to take place between the 29th of April 2021 to the 3rd of May 2021 under the theme Information as a Public Good. We'll be back after the brief break. Please stay tuned. <laughs>